Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Belize Living and Opportunities webinar. We are going to give everybody a few minutes to hop on and get settled into the Zoom call. And if you want to let us know where you are signing in from, we always love to know who is joining us and where from. You can pop over to that Q&A section and let us know. So while people are joining, I have to say, you know, we're talking about a tropical country. We're talking about Belize today. And I am calling in from Southern California, where if you don't know, we have had pretty wild weather. Today is no exception. It is pouring rain. It is cold. I am wishing I was with my co-host in Belize at the moment. The best I could do is sport some some things I brought back from my last trip to Belize and just channel the warmer weather. <laughs> I don't envy you at all, Shanae. Uh, I'm seeing some folks signing in from Canada. From Canada, uh, yes. <laughs> and I don't envy the weather at all. It is super hot and sunny in Belize today, which for yeah. folks wanting to escape the weather, that could be a, a really nice treat. Uh, but happy that we can talk to you all all about Belize and and hear some of our experiences. I'm excited to to hear some more of your maybe insight experiences that you had, Shanae. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm I've been looking forward to this for sure. This has been um, this has been super fun to plan with you, and I'm excited to share our experiences with these folks. I see we have folks in Idaho, which is also not exactly the warmest place on the planet. I'm kind of getting the feeling that everybody that's joining is wishing they were with you in Belize right now, Fuller. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on down, folks. That's exactly why we're here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So a little bit about us um, as a company. We are ECI Development. We have been in business since 1996 and what we specialize in is creating world-class communities all across latin america we have a commitment to developing sustainable developments with a uh, focus on customer satisfaction and we are a leading provider of residential commercial and resort properties in belize and beyond uh, you can see there there is a qr code on your screen if you have your phone handy if you're joining from a computer you can scan that qr code it will lead to a uh, web page that tells you a little bit more about who we are as a company. And without further ado, I am one of your hosts. My name is Sinead Jordan. I am the IRN Director here at ECI Development. Um, before I was at ECI Development, I was a ESL teacher and most of my clientele actually was based in Central and Latin America. I did major in English. Um, I am a devout researcher of any place that I love to go and travel to. And a fun fact is I'm usually mistaken for a local when I'm in Belize. And I've been working from home since before it became cool. Uh, now with ECI, I actually get to make, make myself more of a digital nomad instead of just a work from home person. Uh, I do love to travel, but I hate traveling. So I'm not a big fan of the verb traveling. I wish I could be like um, bewitched where she just wiggles her nose and ends up where I want to go. But because I do love experiencing new places, I am willing to put in the effort and trample through airports and get on airplanes and <laughs> all of that good stuff. And I am a huge foodie. I love local places to eat. If I'm ever on the road, you will never catch me at a chain restaurant, no matter if I'm traveling domestically or internationally. I'm all about that local flavor. And um, I've been with ECI Development for a very specific 1.25 <laughs> years. Fuller, <laughs> so. would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. I, I I just want to make a note there with that 1.25 uh, <laughs> thing with ECI. <laughs> that was probably uh, on my end, but um, it's yeah. it's gone by so fast and um, it, it's really been exciting. As you'll see in today's session, folks, we're really here to talk uh, about everything Belize and living and opportunities and, and really being experts in the field. Um, but it, it's so funny, time flies so fast. Um, you need to come back down to Belize 
Shanann. <laughs> I know. It's a little bit more. <laughs> I when, when I was going through all the pictures for, you know, so that we could prepare this, I was, it brought back so many great memories and it hasn't been that long since I've been down there, but it, you know, all the, maybe because it's the weather, all of a sudden it seems like it's just been forever. So time's I've come been, down. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, folks on the line, I'm Michael Fuller, been with the company for about two years now. Uh, time really does fly fast. Uh, been with the marketing department uh, and grown that over the last two years. Uh, with a really great team working hand in hand with uh, the IRN program and providing a lot of our partners with great content and materials, but also for you folks on the line interested in coming down and venturing off into Central and Latin America uh, to give you some quick tidbits on what we do in this region. Uh, tourism and marketing expert, uh, been in the field for over 15 years. Uh, a lot of my work has been in the hotel industry and um, just providing different services to get folks around in country uh, and, and learning all that they can do. Uh, in Belize, we'll go over some misconceptions such as Belize being known as an island uh, and, and just getting folks to, to really know what's really going on in country, both mainland, uh, in nature and the jungle and also on the sea. Uh, travel expert and expat. I've lived uh, overseas for about eight years and really got to experience not only our products uh, and the different countries that we have products in, in, in uh, at ECI, but also had uh, firsthand experiencing uh, what it is like to live in a new country and 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 whether it's cost of living to uh, finding a job and that whole digital nomad experience. It's really been a fulfilling uh, experience being with ECI for those two years and, and throughout my career and learning about all the things that you can do in every different country, but also how to do it like a local. I think that's both our favorites here, Shanae, on how to do things like a local. Absolutely. So really, really excited to talk to you all today about everything please. So we have a couple of polls for you folks today, three in total. Uh, we're going to launch the first poll now. You'll see it pop up on your screen. Have you been to Belize? Let's launch poll number one. Uh, so you have three options there to choose from. Yes, no, but planning to, never been on my radar. And it looks like we do have a lot of folks on the line that have been in country. That's really exciting. That's exciting but also about half that are planning. Exactly. Uh, so I, I really hope that this webinar for folks that have been to Belize before helps you to maybe discover some new attractions and activities and things to do and some opportunities when it comes to real estate and overseas investment, but also for folks that are just joining in and learning about Belize. I hope that this is a full-fledged experience for you to really get the best knowledge there is in learning about what you can do in this beautiful country. Absolutely. You know, Belize, Wheel of Fortune has been offering Belize trips recently, so guys heard about these meal of fortune. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's how a country's made it, right? When when Wheel of Fortune offers offers trips there. Exactly. When you're on <laughs> uh, how to become a millionaire or one of those shows. <laughs> yep, yep. Exactly. Awesome. awesome. So let's talk a little bit about Belize and where we are located. We are in Central America bordering Guatemala and Mexico, Mexico up north, Guatemala on the west. Uh, and we do have a bunch of islands off the coast of Belize. It's a very small country uh, with a population of about 400,000 people uh, and about the size of, I, I keep missing this one. I think it's Massachusetts that we're- I think it's New Hampshire. It's New Hampshire. Maybe. <laughs> very New tiny Hampshire. country. It's, it's little. <laughs> Little. Yeah. Uh, our I was our say, official language. Oh, go ahead, Shanae. Is English. Is English. <laughs> I think I should be the one to say that because I know you, Fuller, also speak Creole, um, which is also um, very popular in the region, as well as Spanish and Maya. I don't understand you when you speak Creole at all. So but for, <laughs> the, for the folks on the line that, you know, English is, is it for you. Belize is a good choice. It's a good option. Everybody down there does speak. 
Correct. And as Shanae mentioned, there are several different languages and dialects. Uh, our second major language is Spanish uh, for Spanish speakers on the line. So it's easy to get around. Also to practice your Spanish skills uh, if you'd like to. Locals are really friendly and are always willing to help out in that regard. Uh, and many, many different uh, cultures and races and ethnic groups here. So um, we like to call Belize a melting pot of culture. So you can find a bunch of everything down in Belize. And like I mentioned, the population is uh, a little over 400,000 at the moment. Uh, it's a very small country. Uh, we like to have a running joke that if you bump in, into somebody, they probably know five of your relatives here in Belize. <laughs> uh, just, just to illustrate how small it is. Yeah, and so Belize is a parliamentary democracy. Um, as mentioned, English is the official language, which means that um, they also have English as common law for the legal system. And they also have an independent judiciary, so very, very stable government. And tourism is booming in Belize. I actually just looked at some numbers before we started this session, uh, just to see the growth in tourism over the last uh, two months. And it's Last year, we have a slide on this later on in the presentation, but last year uh, we had about 300,000 total visitors in the country, which is really exciting post pandemic and, and traveling being open again and accessible to a lot of folks worldwide. Uh, and we're looking at even bigger rate, um, rates this year for the amount of visitors that we're having in the country. Ecotourism, volunteerism, uh, birding, uh, uh, anything in nature is really, really popular Bye, here. Fly exactly. Fishing, which a lot, I mean, before I knew much about Belize, when I found out that fly fishing was big down there, you know, especially as a North American, when you think of fly fishing, you think of like Montana or Wyoming or someplace like up in like the northern states of, of the U.S. And it's like fly fishing in Belize is a thing. And it it is. It's a big thing. It's a really big thing. Yeah. Um, deep sea fishing, too, over the blue. Um, the, the possibilities for things to do in Belize are endless. Uh, there is not a chance for you to get bored, whether you're looking for leisure and luxury and relaxation to adventurous activities, there is something for everybody to do in Belize. Uh, and cost of living is super low, um, depending on when, where you are in the country, of course. Uh, you'll find where a lot of items are being imported in the country, uh, Prices obviously will be a little higher for those items, but if you're doing it like local uh, and, and going to a lot of local grocery stores um, and getting around like a local, it's pretty affordable to live in Belize. And they have friendly tax systems for foreign investors. So for those folks on the line that are considering that foreign investment, they do have friendly tax systems. I'm actually renting at the moment. Uh, looking at my own real estate opportunities in the near future, really excited for that. Uh, but rent in Belize is generally low, again, depending on where you are in the country. If you are in more urban areas, you're looking at anywhere from 400 to 700 US dollars a month. Uh, in rural areas, this can be anywhere from 200 to 500 US dollars a month. Uh, sometimes it includes utilities, sometimes not. Uh, utilities range anywhere from your electricity, uh, Wi-Fi connection for your internet access uh, and water, uh, but generally uh, your monthly bills are going to range for utilities around 100, 150 US dollars. Yeah, and public transportation costs is between 20 and 300 dollars a month, um, so transportation is also pretty, pretty low and affordable. And then my favorite thing, of course, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a big foodie, so, um, you know, you can, you can eat for pretty cheap in Belize, um, in an inexpensive restaurant, you know, grab a quick lunch, quick bite, five to 10 US dollars is all. And then, you know, at a mid range restaurant, um, you're looking at about 30 to $40. Um, for meal. Yeah, and, and gasoline, depending on if you're uh, kerosene, gasoline, butane, diesel, uh, all available here, but prices range anywhere from about two US dollars all the way up to about 750 US dollars per gallon. Uh, so uh, depending on your usage, uh, whether you're wanting to fill up a car, golf cart, um, or any other types of machinery, 
uh, gas prices are pretty similar, I'd say, to different parts of northern USA. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I think they're pretty relative, just like they are it, here in the States. You know, me being out here in California, my prices for gas are really high. But when I talk to some of my friends that are on the East Coast or in different parts of the country, they're obviously paying a lot less. So gas is relative, which is not something that, you know, it's, it's something we're used to here in the States as well. Oh, goody, we get to talk about our top picks now. So. Um, these are, we, we kind of separated these into two different categories and this was hard. I mean, it really was difficult to come up with just three because as, as Fuller mentioned, there's no possible way to get bored in Belize. There's so much to do. Um, now, um, disclaimer, my time in Belize was limited to just Amber Gisky, just the island. So I don't have anything to share from the mainland. That's next trip. Um, <laughs> but if you are looking to go to Amber Gisky, these are three of my top things. So Secret Beach, one, uh, we took a, a little speedboat, I guess it was, over to Secret Beach from San Pedro. It's beautiful. The, the boat ride over is gorgeous. There's so much to do. There's bars and restaurants all along the beach. There's places to get in all alongside the water. Um, it's shallow, it's clear, it's just absolutely beautiful. You can eat, shop, drink, it's, it's a really great time. Um, definitely a, a leisure activity. Uh, we also took a catamaran over to Peacocker, which is Amber Gisky's sister island, I guess you could kind of say. And we stopped at the reserve and went swimming with nurse sharks. That is something I, I never thought I would do. So I'm, I'm not really an ocean person. The ocean scares me a little bit. Um, but the group I was with convinced me to, to get in the water with the sharks. You can see the picture um, up at the top there. And I'm so glad I did. It was really incredible to be that close to the animals and they're, they were fine. And bonus, I also got to see two big giant sea turtles that were also in the vicinity. So it was a great time, great trip. And then for that cultural element, we, I, the group I was with, we went to a black and white Garifuna restaurant, which is in San Pedro. We had an awesome time. The Garifuna culture is one that I think um, definitely is, is known and respected in the country of Belize. But if you're not from Belize, if you don't know anything about Belize and the different cultures there, it's probably one you haven't heard of. Their story is absolutely fascinating. That evening was filled with, um, his, you know, a history lesson. You can see me dancing there. So they have their own dances. I'm just glad we don't have a video of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you mean? It was really great, Shanae. <laughs> yeah, I, I killed it. I mean, I absolutely killed it. It was like, it was like I, you know, had been doing it my whole life. Um, but and then you also got to experience uh, their their cuisine. Of course, I can't leave that out. So those those I would say are my my top three things that when when I was there the last time that really stick out in my mind. It's my favorite activities on the island. We definitely got to get you over to the western part of of Belize next trip and and show you around my hometown. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so much to explore uh some of my top picks like Shanae mentioned it's really hard to pick just three uh so I, I had to do an eeny meeny miny mo and just pick randomly three <laughs> three options um like Shanae with the catamaran cruise that she took from San Pedro to Key Cocker there are several catamaran cruises that you can do uh along the entire coast of Belize and do some island hopping that's one of my favorite things to do uh, just going off to maybe what seems like an undiscovered island uh, where there's uh, a lot less people and a lot more pristine uh, wildlife and nature to experience. Zip lining is one of my absolute favorite activities to do. I'm a thrill seeker, adventure seeker. If you tuned in into our Nicaragua Living and Opportunities webinar, you would have noticed I did a volcano and slid down the side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, zip lining in Belize, Angel Falls, this is going toward the southern part of the country. 
uh, a little off of the Cayo district. And it is known as the tallest, fastest, and longest zip line in the country. So um, 30 seconds feels like an hour when you're zip lining. <laughs> really? Uh, I've never done it. Oh, yeah. It's it's really amazing just seeing like going through mountains, uh, the high, some of the highest peaks in the country uh, and seeing rivers and streams below you just breathtaking. Okay, we're doing that next time. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and getting involved in the community. One of the things that I really enjoy about what we do here at ECI, but just in general for what I've done uh, for, for my entire life is just getting involved in some community efforts, uh, being a part of the Rotaract Club. Uh, I know we have Aces Wildlife Sanctuary that we partner with in San Pedro uh, and several other initiatives that we do throughout the country, just getting involved with, with the locals and, and helping out how we can and uh, preserving our wildlife and nature uh, are really some of the big things that I enjoy doing. Uh, we actually have a bunch of folks that come down to visit Belize simply for volunteerism or ecotourism. Uh, so if you are interested in some of those opportunities, let me know and we can get you set up. Your favorite part, Shanae, food. Yay, food. <laughs> so um, this, this was hard too. Because we ate, I mean, oh my gosh, we ate so well when we were when we were down there. Um, so honestly, one of the things I was gonna put for food, but it's not like people on the line could necessarily replicate it. A lot of the going back to the catamaran cruises. So the one I was on, they made shrimp ceviche right on the catamaran, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm sure a lot of catamaran cru cruises do that. Um, but as far as restaurants go, uh, my absolute favorite meal that I had the last time I was there was the lionfish seafood medley at LV's Kitchen in San Pedro. That's the one on the left. Um, if you don't know what a lionfish is, it is a very poisonous fish. And it is also, um, gosh, the word's escaping me. It's, it's yeah, it's an invasive species. Invasive, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, it is an invasive species, so they are harvested, you know, whenever. And they they prepare them so they're not poisonous anymore. But that was the best tasting piece of fish I have ever had in my life. So if you ever get to San Pedro, which everybody on the line should totally do, um, definitely go to Elvis and get the the lionfish seafood medley. Also, El Fogon, which is um, it, also in San Pedro, I had their shrimp creole. I'm I'm kind of like Bubba Gump from from Forrest Gump. Like I love shrimp in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Give it to me all the ways. So I decided to try the creole at El Fogon. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be when I I don't know what I was thinking or what I was really expecting, but it was kind of more like a soupy stew, and it was delicious. I, I finished the whole entire bowl. It was absolutely to die for. So that that's my pick for that. And that was, a, that was a lunch, by the way. So we've got dinner, lunch, and then breakfast. So we kind of went backwards in our day. Um, but the breakfast quesadilla is at Blue Water Grill, which is located next to um, Sunbury's Hotel. Um, that quesadilla was phenomenal. You can see that there's a bottle of hot sauce there. And it is called Marie Sharps, and it is a carrot-based hot sauce that will blow your socks off. It is very spicy. I love spice, and I now have bottles of it that I brought back that are in my pantry because I put it on everything. It literally, if you like spice, if you like hot sauce, Marie Sharps, huge shout out. You can put it, you, you can put it on every single meal that you see here literally and it would would be phenomenal so i have some good news for you shanae i saw a post from mary sharp uh, maybe a month ago saying that mary sharp is going to be in every walmart coming soon now countrywide in the united states so that is exciting. mary but, sharp know, already a global brand but <laughs> <Seriously. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, but that for is sure. exciting that is exciting for, for me. It's it's great hot sauce, guys. Really funny. <laughs> uh, I didn't necessarily pick breakfast, lunch, and dinner like Shanae did. I just went with I food that, that I love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but over 
in Western Belize, Guava Lim uh, is a really, really great restaurant. Um, I love their pizza. Um, sometimes you can get thin crust pizza. Sometimes you can get a little bit more dough if you'd like, uh, but it's baked in a, a brick oven. Uh, so really crisp, smoky flavors on your pizza. Um, I'm not sure if they have this on their menu still, but they had a pizza that was pear and arugula and gorgonzola and it was, and, and bacon as well. And it was amazing, amazing pizza. Um, Wahoo, back to some fish dishes and in uh, San Pedro, Wild Mangoes really is uh, creative with their dish uh, uh, um, offerings and uh, Wahoo, I mean, you can flavor Wahoo with anything and it's great. <laughs> uh, and chicken tikka masala or uh, butter chicken at Obambai. Obambai is actually a new restaurant on the island uh, in San Pedro town and really great authentic Indian food and cuisine if you'd like. I believe they have some uh, Taiwanese inspired dishes as well. So great option if you're looking to explore a little bit more with your food while in Belize. Love me some good butter chicken. I'll have to go there next time. I didn't get to, I don't even know if they were open when I was there. Probably not. Yeah. All right, and as Fuller and I mentioned, we like to do things like a local. Um, one of, this might sound really corny, but one of the things that I just really fell in love with when I was on the island is the fact that the main mode of transportation is a golf cart. I took to golf cart driving like nobody's business. I mean, it's not like it's that difficult, but I, I, you know, I figured out the streets. There's no street signs, folks, by the way, on the island. There's, there's front, middle, and back, and you have to kind of figure out, you know, how things work. But I loved it. When I got back from Belize and got in my car at the airport, I realized I was going like 20 miles an hour because <laughs> I apparently <laughs> forgot how to drive for half a second. So love, love the mode of transportation on the island. And then, um, Cooling off with, with a cocktail is, you know, that's island life, right? Uh, shout out to Stacks Restaurant and Bar. This is where I had a phenomenal watermelon margarita. Uh, that is a local place. You're not going to find a lot of tourists at Stacks. So um, if you get down to the island, ask around and find it for yourself and enjoy one of those views. And like Shanae, my dog happens to enjoy riding golf cart as well. You can see her there uh, attempting to. But uh, San Pedro, Belize on a whole, is a pet-friendly destination. Uh, there are many accommodations that allow you to have your pet with you in room. Uh, so if you're looking to travel and you're worried about your furry friends and wanting to bring them along, you're absolutely able to. Uh, you can reach out to us. Uh, we're, we're definitely going to talk about one of our opportunities in a few that this is possible, but you can reach out to us and let us know if that's something that you're considering and if you need some help with that. And if you're not able to go out to a fancy restaurant, you can always bring a personal chef to your home or to your hotel room. Uh, fun fact here, he's probably going to have my head for this, but the owner of Giotto restaurant on the island in San Pedro, it's a uh, Japanese themed restaurant, a lot of fusion cuisine, Belize and Japanese infusions. Uh, he actually paid us a visit in Cayo uh, at our home once upon a time and prepared sushi for us. So uh, a lot of those options are available to you as well. If you'd like a personal chef or if you'd like to maybe experiment a little bit, grab your own ingredients and see what the Belizean uh, cuisine experimenting is like, you can have that happen um, and, and bring your chef to your table in your room. How fun wanted, is that? <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. Just checking off new experiences for the next time. Good job, Shanae. <laughs> All righty, poll number two for you folks. We're going to launch another one on the screen. What type of traveler are you? So let me go ahead and launch poll two. Ready? Perfect. Are you a leisure, luxury, adventure seeker, beach goer, nature lover, foodie, 
or into some volunteerism or ecotourism. This is a multiple choice answer. So you can go ahead and feel free to pick more than just one and let us know what type of traveler you are. Where are my foodies at? Not so many foodies. I'm surprised, Shanae. That's okay. <laughs> Just I'll work on you guys. Don't worry. We, we got time. We got time. <laughs> I don't know. It's going okay. up. It's going up a bit. Okay. It's getting there. It's looking like most folks are looking for that island adventure and leisure time. Uh, and some folks on the end of wanting that adventure in nature. So that's really great. We do have some amazing travel packages coming up in just a bit that offers a bit of all of the options that were on the screen uh, just a while ago from that pool. But before we get into those opportunities, let's tackle some of the common misconceptions about Belize. I do see some questions coming in already about some of these topics. Uh, so why don't we jump in here, Shanae? Uh, Belize and safety. I know this is a big one for folks that are looking to explore anywhere outside of their country and wanting to venture into a new. Uh, I know that the news loves to sensationalize a lot of crazy things. Uh, but Belize is generally a safe place to visit. Uh, one of my top tips is always to do your research beforehand in coming to any country, learn about the laws and regulations. You also don't want to offend and put yourself in any situation that may cause you to feel unsafe. Uh, also, don't travel in the nighttime anywhere, not just Belize. That's just pro tip for anywhere that you're traveling. Don't travel alone in uh, areas uh, that may seem sketchy. Um, there's actually a really good buddy system in Belize, uh, especially if you're coming in with a travel agency, uh, with a company like ECI Development that can uh, offer um, some expertise on um, partnering with maybe tour guides uh, and getting you around the country safely, if that is a huge concern for you. But yeah, generally I mean, speaking, Belize is a safe place. Yeah, I mean, something I'd like to say is, you know, someone, I mean, you're Fuller is Belizean, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an American and I'm, I'm a female and I went down by myself. I didn't take anybody with me. Yes, I was with the group. I never felt unsafe. Um, I didn't spend much time on the mainland, but I never felt unsafe on the island. Um, you know, safety, you're as safe as you want to be. Um, I live in Southern California. I've got downtown LA not far from me. Am I going to go to downtown LA by myself, you know, at night? Oh, I'm not <laughs> because it's not <laughs> safe. Um, so, you know, I think, I think you just have to remember that you're as safe as you want to be and just make smart choices. It doesn't matter where you are in this world. Safety is, is, is relative to, to the decisions that you make. So definitely. We want to. I, I didn't. I didn't feel it. I was perfectly happy driving my golf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although Shanae spent most of her time on the island, Belize is not just an island. I know it is highly advertised as a beach destination, but there's so much more to do. Uh, Belize is landlocked, like I mentioned earlier, uh, and bordering Mexico and Guatemala. Uh, six different districts for you to explore uh, and, and many things to do um, outside of just being on an island. But that is not to say, of course, that islands are not great. Uh, we, we do have a lot of fun um, in island hopping, as I mentioned earlier, and um, on the islands of Umbergus Key and Key Cocker, which, are, which I'd say is about maybe 30 minutes away from each other by boat. Um, so a, a lot of activities to do by the way. <laughs> on, on water and uh, on, the, on the mainland. Yeah, and I Number think- Number three. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I, I was actually gonna jump over to six about Belize being for, for backpackers only. Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I think a long time ago, it, it used to be kind of more of a, of a destination simply for those hardcore divers and those hardcore fishermen and, you know, the, the real adventure seekers, but, you know, over the past 
10 years or so, it's become a place for families. It's become a place for honeymooners. Um, it's become a place for people to even have corporate events and, you know, that sort of thing, destination weddings. So it, the, the tourism and the whole idea that it's just, um, you know, that, that real rugged experience, it's not like that anymore. There, there is something for everybody in Belize, bring the kids down, bring the, the grandparents down. Um, they won't be bored. Um, and if they want to be bored, they can lay on the beach and sleep, bring the book. But, <laughs> yeah, you I think that goes hand in have... hand. That goes hand in hand with, uh, I guess, number three as well, Shanae, and Belize being known as this poor destination uh, with a lot of luxury branded hotels now popping up everywhere um, and being able to facilitate not just the branded hotels, of course, but being able to facilitate big corporate events, uh, big tourism and travel events at that, uh, weddings, um, building of infrastructure throughout the entire country. Uh, there's a really great plan to um, that that's happening right now in, in my neck of the woods in Belize. Uh, where new roads are are being uh, paved all the way up to some of the um, uh, nature reserves and, and Maya sites, uh, which makes it a little bit more accessible for folks that are already traveling there by road. Um, so I uh, just wanted to jump in on while you were talking yeah. about backpackers on that misconception. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's not just a bunch of hostels, you know, down there. So yeah, which, you know, kind of is a good segue sorry, number four, but um, it's kind of a good segue to number five when it comes to foreign investment, because you have, you know, these different uh, populations of tourists, you have the families, you have the, the you know, the, the office folks, you have um, the honeymooners, you have all these different kinds of tourists. It's a great um, country for foreign investment. I mentioned that they do have some attractive tax advantages as well for foreign investors. But, you know, when you're looking to invest, want to see some sort of cash flow and appreciation and Belize is definitely in a sweet spot right now for both. Right. And as we've mentioned, I think we did a lot of that earlier on the languages. It's um, not just an English speaking country, but we also speak Spanish as one of our primary languages here, uh, among many different languages, of course. Okay, residency in Belize. I know for a lot of folks on the line looking for that investment opportunity or to move over to a new country, there are several different residency programs that exist. I will say that uh, this information is always changing. Uh, so definitely do your due diligence and grab some more information online. There are several other residency programs that exist, uh, but we can start off here with three. We have the QRP program. Uh, for retired persons, uh, you must meet a age of 45 years old and up and have an income of about 2000 US dollars per month to qualify for this program. Yeah, and then we also have an investor residency that is available in Belize. Um, it is designed for foreign investors who want to start or invest in a business in Belize. It does require um, at least a $100,000 investment that creates jobs for Belizeans. And uh, once once you get approved for that residency, then you do get permanent residency in the, in the country. Correct. And uh, a most recent one is the digital nomad residency. For folks like Shani and I that work remotely and can pretty much work anywhere, that there's a good Wi-Fi connection, there is a program for you as well in Belize. Uh, so definitely go ahead and check that one out. Um, again, you have to be making a certain threshold of income uh, to start that process. One of the great things about residency in Belize, if you're looking for that foreign investment tie-in, uh, that normally helps to cover some of the costs uh, to attain your residency for either of these programs. So just wanted to throw that out there. But again, uh, if you'd like more information on residency and starting that process, go ahead online. Uh, there's many resources out there that will provide you with information on several programs that exist. All right, Alrighty. let's talk about yeah. our opportunities. Yes, today we'll talk to you folks about two main opportunities in Belize, both being on 
Hamburger Ski in San Pedro, the Best Western Grand Bayman Gardens, and the Belize Marriott Residences. But before we jump in, one last poll. I promise this is the end uh, for today. What's your perfect setup for investing? Let's go ahead and launch poll number three. This is specific to condominiums. Two of the opportunities that we're going to talk about right now are uh, condominiums. So let's see what your perfect setup would look like if you were to invest in a condo today. Alrighty, see some answers coming in. This is also a multiple choice. So if you do have more than one answer, you can feel free to choose more than one. You're pretty evenly spread out. Yeah. Well, the good news is uh, that all of the options on the line uh, being showed for this poll are a part of the opportunities that we are about to show you. So let's spoiler go alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Let's jump in into the best Western Grand Bayman Gardens. We're specifically talking about our condo building number six here, the Galleon Building, uh, and some of the opportunities at this resort. Yeah, so Grand Bayman, that's where I stayed the last time I was down on the island. And it does have an amazing amount of amenities. Some of the ones that have even come up since after I left, we now have a full uh, bar and restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, there is a very nice gym there, a swimming pool, laundry services. Um, it's very accessible. They even have a tennis and pickleball court, which I don't know if you know, but pickleball is like becoming a huge deal. Um, even among celebrities um, here in the States, there was just recently like a country music star pickleball tournament. So come down to Belize and play some pickle bar, bleh, pickleball. <laughs> so <laughs> there's lots of really great things to do at, uh, at Grand Bayman Gardens. And it's really close to the beach, about, a, about two blocks. Correct. And this is one of our um, pet friendly destinations as well. If you're looking mm -hmm. again to bring bring on your furry friends with you uh, down to Belize. Uh, I actually used to live on site at Best Western Grand Bim and Gardens. And uh, even from laundry service, it was such an ease. There's a long term rental program as well. If you're looking to maybe stay a couple of months or a couple of days before you move on to a different country or before you invest. Uh, so there's a great opportunity there for you to do a long-term rental and enjoy uh, everything on site at Grand Bayman. Yeah, I met uh, a lot of great friends when I was there. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the starting price for our Galleon building, uh, building number six there that we're uh, just, uh, I believe we've actually broken ground on that site, uh, yeah. but the starting price for uh, the residences there is a little over or under, sorry, 200,000 US dollars uh, with uh, your square footage ranging from anywhere from 318 to 765 square feet. There are options for you to actually uh, add on multiple residencies to one package. So if you're wanting to buy maybe a studio and two full one bedroom options, you have that available to you, which means the square footage obviously becomes a lot greater. Uh, and these all have those lock uh, doors that connect between the different residences. Uh, balcony access, which is huge. So you can get some of that outside time and enjoy the surrounding nature. Uh, I'd like to point out here, it's not on the slide, but Grand Bayman Gardens, the best Western Grand Bayman Gardens, is actually a unique spot on the island as a lot of uh, tourism and infrastructure goes up on the island. We really wanted to preserve a space uh, on the island that you can still see birds and be in nature. Uh, and this is actually a, a really great spot, uh, especially for folks that are looking for those birding opportunities. Um, you can see them right right outside your door. And giant iguanas uh, too. And giant <laughs> iguanas. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what's really great about these uh, residences is you're not only getting a bedroom. I know a lot of uh, condos or hotels are being sold as just a one bedroom opportunity. You're also getting a full kitchen and living area. Uh, so there's ample space for you to, if you're conducting business, to separate that from your bedroom. If you want to uh, cook a meal and it's not interfering with other spaces, um, there's a lot of living space available and 13 total available residences at this uh, really amazing opportunity that is left. Yeah, we don't have, there's, there's not, I mean, there's, there is a little bit of a sense of urgency here because there's not a lot um, of inventory here. So if this is something that you are considering, um, and yeah, I think it's on the next slide, Fuller. Um, oh, no, it's not. Um, one after this but it is we did, we did just break ground so if you're looking for something you know to be ready to go for you to enjoy um you know in a relatively short period of time this is a great opportunity to, to invest in correct and not to mention it wasn't on the slide either um but this is a five floor uh condo building so there are options available on each floor uh, for you to 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 get in uh, with the 13 that's available. But as Shanae mentioned, there is that sense of urgency. These are growing pretty fast, especially at that uh, starting price. Uh, it's uh, a lot uh, less expensive than what you would pay for a closet space in maybe New York. <laughs> uh, the so that space on the beach in San Diego would run you far more than this. And yeah, the so the water's a lot warmer in Belize than it is in San Diego. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you'd like more information on this, let us know uh, at Webinar ECI. Just for some quick tourism stats here, uh, that occupancy rate, if you're looking at this as an investment opportunity for that return, because of tourism booming in the country, this is a really, again, another great opportunity for you. Uh, one of the great problems that I, I'd like to believe from an investment standpoint in looking at opportunities like this is Belize runs out of hotels every high season. They run out of rooms. So with a condo building being built with, again, that 13 more available uh, residences, this is providing more opportunity for visitors to come down and book those rooms when that doesn't exist at present. Um, so even more chance for that return and getting back uh, that return on your investment with the occupancy rate going up since last year an average uh, night stay in san pedro is about 235 us dollars a night uh, we're right about on that range at best western grand Bayman gardens if you are a re reward member you can use your reward points at this best western as well uh, and get those loyalty perks um, and 74% of all tourism in, that, in the country uh, goes out to San Pedro. San Pedro is definitely a stop for most visitors. Um, and they do a bit of both, maybe island for three, four days, and then off to the mainland or the reverse of that. So a lot of opportunity, again, uh, yeah. if you're looking at that investment. And, you know, when I, I wasn't there during what is considered high season, and I decided to stay an extra day. and um, the front desk about freaked out because uh, really didn't have room for me because there was a music festival and the island was sold out. It was completely yeah. sold out. So um, it worked out. I, I didn't have to sleep in sleep in the lobby, but uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the tourism is, it, it's no joke. I mean, we, we both have seen it for ourselves, how tourism is booming inside the country. Correct. And as we both mentioned, we've broken ground on the Galleon building. Uh, we got our permits from Air Control. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about that opportunity, reach out to us at webinar at ecidevelopment.com. And we'll be sure to send you some great resources for you to dive in and learn more before investing at the Best Western. Next up is the Belize Marriott Residences. If you've heard about the Marriott in Belize, you may have come across the Alaya. This is going to be a fully branded Marriott uh, being constructed on the island. It's, the construction has already started. 
um, and it is more on the luxury end of the merit brands. Uh, so we'd like to talk to you all about some of the opportunities at this uh, amazing uh, property. Yeah, so this this one, so Best Western is, is a couple blocks away from the water. This Marriott residence is, is going to be right on the water and pretty, you know, on par with, with the Marriott, the amenities are going to be pretty endless. You know, you've got conference rooms, um, oceanfront pools, a rooftop sunset lounge, oceanfront restaurants, um, a, even a dive shop and a, a dock retail space, fitness club, a luxury spa, kids club, kids club for the kiddos. So, you know, all the things that you would expect from a luxury brand like the Marriott, this is no different. All of these amenities will be available within this Marriott residences. And um, it, it, it's exciting, it's very exciting. Yeah, the, these uh, residences start at uh, about 319, 900 US dollars, uh, fully equipped again with everything that you would need. Um, Square footage ranges anywhere from 400 to a little under 2,000 square feet. Yeah, there's several um, different models on in, in this particular uh, condominium. Correct. And unlike with the uh, Best Western property, you can purchase multiple if you're looking to maybe uh, get a bigger return on your investment. Five stories with a rooftop launch. Uh, and uh, one of the great things about owning property in Belize with the Best Western or the Marriott, you will get your title uh, for your living space, uh, which is huge fully, for a lot of folks. Yep, they are fully titled. It is yours. And construction is underway for this project already. Like Shanae mentioned, it is a couple of yards away from the Best Western. Uh, right in front of the beautiful Caribbean Sea uh, and definitely looking forward to seeing more progress and sharing this with you folks as the months go along here in 2023. If you'd like more information on the Marriott, do shoot us that email at webinar at ECI. Maybe put in a keyword like the Marriott and we can shoot you over the info packet for this as well. We did talk about some of the travel packages that you can have in country. Shanae, why don't you kick us off with maybe our, our favorite, the Jungle and Reef. All right, yes, so Jungle and Reef, this is a combination experience between mainland and island. Right now we have a deal going on where it is $2,835 US, uh, US dollars per person. This is for eight days and seven nights. Ooh, that's a deal. And you can explore Cayo on the mainland and San Pedro on the Amber Sea. So if you're interested in that, shoot us an email and we will be sure to get you more information on that. Hey, I might come down and do that one. You should. I should. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to mention here, we didn't uh, add in, just because of the time that we have with you folks today uh, for this hour session, we do have our property in Cayo, Table Rock Lodge. Uh, it is near the Mountain Pine Ridge area, so a lot to explore there. That would be the add-on from staying at the Best Western in San Pedro to moving on to the island, uh, sorry, mainland in Cayo and staying at Table Rock Lodge. We do have the Island Leisure Package. This is for folks that are wanting to maybe do some of the snorkeling on the sea, uh, relaxing on a catamaran cruise, uh, swimming with the sharks, and staying at our Best Western property for five days or four nights at eight it is 805 us dollars per person i do want to mention these are not all-inclusive packages meals are separate meals and beverages are separate from the amount that you've seen there apart from our my experience which i guess you could consider to be a little little all-inclusive because there is food as a part of this amazing tour uh you, where you do this recently or something yeah like yeah. You you really get hands on and uh, with the, the Maya folks and the Kaya district, uh, which are uh, mostly Yucatec Maya uh, in, in the area that this experience is being held. And um, they will share with you how to grind corn uh, like the Mayas did in the ancient days and make chocolate from 
a cacao pod Ooh. and eat fresh chocolate um, among other types of cuisines that you'll you'll have throughout this experience. But you also get to explore a cave uh, on a kayak, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just mentioned chocolate. I'm kind of surprised I didn't mention this earlier. Well, I'm really not a big chocolate fan. Like, I know that that's, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm, I could really take or leave chocolate, to be quite honest. However, Belizean chocolate is on a whole nother planet, really. <laughs> um, it is the best chocolate I have ever eaten in my life. Um, I went to that chocolate shop. Um, that's next to Wild Mangoes. I can't remember the name of it. Belize um, Chocolate Company. Belize Chocolate Company. And I bought like a bunch of like, I, I, I do like truffles, but I bought a bunch of truffles to, but so does my mom. So I, I bought a bunch of truffles to take, bring back to the States to my mom. Not one made it back. I ended up <laughs> eating the whole bag of truffles while I was there. Um, and I know I'm a bad daughter. I did not go back and get her more. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the two, the two like things that, um, the Marie Sharp hot sauce and Belizean chocolate, if you get down, those, those are the two things you must purchase and bring back with you so that you can experience a little bit of Belize when you return home from your vacation, for sure. Well, this is just opportunity for you to bring mom down and, and get her own chocolate. Sinead. That's true. She's going to have to because it's, it clearly does not make its way back. So if she wants the chocolate, she's going to have to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know we're wrapping up here, folks. I do want to take some of your questions on the line. Of course, all of your questions will be answered through one of our property consultants if we don't get to it. Uh, and we do have all of your contact information joining us in today. So not to worry, you will get a copy of this recording and your questions will be answered, if not answered on the line. Uh, do give us a follow on our social media at Best Western San Pedro on both uh, Facebook and Instagram, as well as ECI Travel and ECI Communities. This is where you can find a lot of great information on travel tips, uh, different guides on how to get down and explore, not just Belize, but the different countries that we operate in for ECI. And ECI Communities goes well in depth into the different properties and real estate opportunities that you can have, as well as some FAQs and tips and tricks before you invest. So do give us a follow on yes, social. I, I did see in the Q&A, there's actually several questions regarding the sargasm on the island. Um, when I was there, they were having kind of a sargasm outbreak. Um, it's it's not, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, it's not the most pleasant time to be on the island. It does kind of have a smell. Um, if anybody's familiar with Southern California and the salt sea, that's what it reminded me of. Um, we get, depending on the weather, sometimes it, it really kind of is that same kind of sulfur smell. Um, the water was still gorgeous. I mean, it doesn't really, I mean, except for along the shoreline, it doesn't really affect the, the, the water. So if you're going to take a catamaran out and all of that, you're not, you know, you're not missing anything. Um, you know, I think, Fuller, you can speak to this more. It's just kind of an ebb and flow. It happens, you know, certain times of the year. It is what it is. Um, and, you know, I, nobody, nobody had any less of a good time when we were there because of the sargasm. And I right. believe you said it was pretty bad when you were there. And like, I wouldn't have known. I mean, it was fine. I mean, so yeah. don't, let, don't let it deter you from, from going. For sure. Exactly. It, don't let it deter you at all. Um, it's a problem that the entire Central America is facing at the moment. Um, and a lot of the hotels and folks in the tourism industry are not only doing daily cleanups to ensure that it's not present on the beach, uh, but also realize that there are many different factors to take into consideration in uh, maybe disposing of it or trying to convert it into maybe uh, renewable energy somehow. Um, all of those are being considered at the moment. Um, but like Shanae mentioned, it's 
uh, especially on the west side of the island, you're not going to be affected by sargassum at all. Um, on the east side of the island, um, you are going to be somewhat affected, uh, but it is being taken care of by the locals and the tourism industry and all of the hotels that are on the coast. I'm just going through some of the questions. Hey, Fuller, can you answer about highways and roads, what those are like on the mainland? Yes, uh, like I mentioned, the road going from uh, an area called San Ignacio, uh, Santa Elena, all the way up to Caracol, which is one of the, it's actually the biggest mile road in the country. Uh, take this into perspective when you're thinking about roads. It used to take five, maybe four or five hours to get to this location. It now takes you less than half that time. Uh, so roads and, and infrastructure continues to be an ongoing process in Belize, um, progress, uh, and um, for the most part, main things that you're wanting to get to are accessible. Is it is it in Belize or Nicaragua that has, I think it's Belize, there's a famous highway? I think it's mm. got the name of a bird. Hummingbird? Hummingbird? Yeah, Hummingbird Highway. Uh, that is going to the southern part of the country. The most beautiful highway, in my opinion, it's, in the country. <laughs> so so our, our CEO, actually, um, I was at a conference with him a couple months ago, and he said his absolute most favorite drive on the planet down Hummingbird Highway. Yeah, beautiful. So, Mountain yeah. ranges. Um, you, you, can, you get to see the largest Jaguar preserve in the entire world as you are traveling down on the highway. So another one for your bucket list. I was just gonna say, just another <laughs> one. Um, for the folks that have residency questions, please reach out to us and we have your information as well. We'll have a property consultant put you in touch with the right folks for those of you that have residency questions. Um, quality and speed of the internet service at the properties. Really My fast. Yeah, my internet worked just fine um, at Grand Bayman. So. Yeah, the, um, for folks that are looking to work, I will just give this disclaimer when it comes to our jungle property. Keep in mind, you are in the middle of the jungle. Um, and the only area which uh, internet connection is in the main area, restaurant, um, uh, your front desk area. Uh, there are some workstations that you can conduct your work. You will still get very fast internet in those areas, but in your room, you will not. Uh, there, it, this is also an eco uh, resort. They rely on solar energy for all of their power. So um, this is also one of the main reasons why they haven't connected internet in all of the rooms on that property. But the best Western property, you do get really, really good internet all across. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I let's maybe take two more questions. Yeah, let's do two more. So um, the bug situation, it, I mean, I thought it was really awesome that like everywhere you went had bug spray. So, I mean, it's, I mean, this is on the island. I'm not, I mean, it's probably the same on the mainland. I mean, you're in a tropical environment. There's going to be bugs. Um, bring, bring your bug spray and you'll be fine. And, and, and there's also, go ahead. I was going to say, it's amazing. Most places you go, have bug spray to offer you to, you know, re-up if you need to, so. Yeah, and if you don't want uh, DEET on you, there are a lot of natural remedies as well being sold at a lot of the gift shops and, and a lot of the local spots as well. Um, my experience with bugs, I, I, I like to maybe have a, a, a little joke here saying that bugs in Belize love fresh meat. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I think that we uh, actually joked about that. That was another reason why people probably thought I was a local because I really wasn't getting. You weren't getting bit at all. I wasn't getting bit at all. <laughs> so, um, yeah. One last question: Peak travel season, um, November to April ish. Yeah, think. peak travel starts so. I guess let's look at that in the perspective of the traveler. If you want to be here during the peak season, meaning like uh, a lot more is there to do, um, that is between late October to end of March, April, 
is where that season would 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 happen. But that's also when most travelers are visiting Belize. Um, and keep in mind, during that season, folks are booking years in advance to be at certain properties. So availability becomes scarce, prices bump up as a result. If you're looking to travel and not maybe be around where there's so much crowd, looking for a little bit more inexpensive options, but also realizing that not everything will be open during this period of time, then it's between April to September every year. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. I know we didn't get to all the questions. We had a lot of really awesome questions that somebody will be in touch with you following up to make sure that your questions get answered. We hope that this was a helpful and exciting experience for you. I know I enjoyed chatting and digging up uh, my my memories of being on, on the island the last time and Fuller, I mean, you get to experience paradise every day of the year. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to, to have been on the line with you too, Shanae, and, and go down memory lane. I do hope that you folks are planning your next trip down here in Belize so that you can make your own memories. Uh, on the screen there is that QR code for our Belize handbook, super great guide uh, that you can grab as well. But looking forward to being in touch with all of you all and see you in Belize very soon. That's have right. a great one, folks. Have a good one, guys. See ya. Bye-bye.